the Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon, and this one, The Brakeman's Daughter. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Well, it is of a fine spring morning, and I am just standing on the corner of 44th, watching the spring weather take over, and trying to get a few gulps of fresh air in between large portions of taxi exhaust. That is a wonderful morning, and I am thinking how wonderful it is when I feel a tap on my shoulder. I look around and see a young guy's face grinning at me. The face opens and says, Well, now, my old pal, Broadway. The Hummingbird. <laughs> well, 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 and how are you? Just great. <laughs> you ain't changed a bit since I saw you last. Two years ago, huh? Yeah, just about. What brings you to New York from Cleveland, Ohio? Oh, the big false face sent for me. Uh-oh. Uh, no rough stuff, just sort of a business conference. When the big false face calls a business conference, it is very likely to get rough. Nah, everything's peaceful. Oh, boy, what weather. I like spring. It has its points. Mainly, it brings on no snow. Uh-huh. You know, I... Hey, Broadway, take a look at this doll coming at us. Yeah, she is very restful on the eye. You know her? Never see her before. I, uh... You, uh... You know a hummingbird? Me? I, uh... No. She looks at you. Yeah. Boy, I never saw a doll like that before. Neither do I. You know, I wish I knew her. Yeah, I sure do. Well, I cannot help agreeing with the hummingbird, because the doll who passes is very pleasant to behold. Also, she looks at him, and he looks at her, and it is just the same as if they hold two hours conversation. But they are both young, and it is spring. And the way language can pass between young guys and young dolls without them saying a word is practically uncanny. Well, the hummingbird gets his wish. He meets her. And how he does, and what happens after, is something I will tell you in a minute. Now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, The Brakeman's Daughter. Like I say, the hummingbird gazes after the doll. She looks back at him, and there is almost a high voltage line between them. Then something happens. Gee, what a doll. What hey, she is not looking where she is going. Crossing against the lights. That truck. Hey, miss! Come on, Broadway. Hey, hey, miss! Look out! <laughs> hey, you, what do you think you're doing? Crossing the cow pasture? Are you hurt? You all right? Why? Yes, I, that was stupid of me. Nah. Well, look where you're driving a truck, Mac. Yeah, maybe you want trouble, huh? None at all. But I got some extra if you want any. Oh, please, it was my fault. I wasn't looking. I crossed against the lights. Sure you did. You better move on, Mac. Who do you think you are? I said you better move on. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Hey, look, miss, you got to get out of the street. Come on. Thank you. You all right, little miss? What? Oh, yes, thanks. Just, just a little shake. That is a narrow escape you have. I should have tattooed that truck driver's noggin a little. Oh, no, it wasn't his fault. I, I guess I've got to learn how to cross streets in New York. You're new here, huh? Yes. Oh. I I didn't thank you for, for pulling me out of the way. Oh, it's all right. Well, you could have been hurt. Uh, uh, not a chance. Yes, there was. Oh, forget it. I, uh, well, I, I guess I'll be going. Sure. I've got some shopping to do. Yeah, yeah I guess so. I, I guess I'll be going. Uh-huh. I guess she has to go, Hummingbird. Yeah. Well, goodbye, and... Thank you again. Oh, sure. Don't mention it. Goodbye. I've got to be going. <laughs> so long. 
Her name is Sophie Glutz, and she lives in Flatbush. Huh? Do you say something, Broadway? I say her name is Ermeline Wurzenheimer, and she lives in Schenectady. What? Like I say, her name is Salome Schultz. She lives in the Bronx. Holy mackerel, I don't even know her name. Now, that is very strange. You practically save her life, and you do not find out her name. What a dope, what a sap. Well, she is walking very slow-like. I do not think she is in much of a hurry to get something. Sure, come on. I will wait here. Well, get going. For a guy who is hurrying after her, you are given a great imitation of Grant's too. Ah, uh, let it go. Now I see everything. The hummingbird passing up a chance to meet a doll. That kind, yeah. Why do you say that? <laughs> Dolls like her ain't for me. She does not seem to think so. Nah, she don't know me from Adam. This is news. Well, you don't get it. You've got a good look at her? I am fairly busy taking in details, yes. Why? So, a doll like that wouldn't give a guy like me a tumble if she knew who I was. Uh huh. Well, you know it. Chances are she'd keel over in a dead faint if she found out I was. I was the hummingbird. You got another name? Forgot it long ago. I see. A hummingbird. Flits from doll to doll. All the same kind of dolls. Not like her. I get your point, but uh, things can change. For me? Uh -uh. Yeah, what am I standing here for? I gotta find the big false face and see what he wants with me. Oh, sure. Besides, he promised to introduce me to a real classy doll. Oh, so? Sure. Dolly calls the Brakeman's daughter. The Brakeman's daughter? Yeah. Hey, you said that like you knew her. No, 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 I never meet her. Well, why you got that funny look on your face? I have, uh, well, I, uh, maybe I uh, think of something funny. Oh, okay. You want to come along with me? Where? See the big false face. Who, me? Look, Hummingbird, if I know the kind of a meeting this will be, and I think I do, I will stay away. <laughs> there ain't going to be no trouble. Come on along. Maybe we'll have some laughs. <laughs> Maybe we will have some laughs, he says. He does not know that the big false face has a sense of humor. And one of the face's biggest jokes is the brakeman's daughter. Anyway, I go along with the hummingbird and we get to the place where big false face is having this little meeting. He is called false face because he always wears a castor oil smile that looks like it is painted on. This smile is strictly a throw off because he is often smiling when he is not amused at anything. Well, like I say, we get to the place. The hummingbird goes in a room I sit outside with a guy by the name of Crowbar Connolly, one of the faces boys, and the scene is as follows. How come you come along, Broadway? Me? Uh, well, Crowbar, it is a long time since I see the hummingbird. You didn't tip I... him to the gag, did you? No. Good thing. False face don't like his gag spoiled. Does he not ever get tired of the brakeman's daughter, Rip? Why should he? <laughs> it's a good gag. I remember the time Rocco Scarpati got it. Yeah. So do I. It was in the dead of winter. <laughs> Rocco didn't find his way out of the woods. He froze to death. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> of course. It wasn't False Face's fault. No, of course not. He has nothing to do with it. He just likes his fun, that's all. A very light-hearted guy. <laughs> uh, working the gimmick on the hummingbird is going to be good. The kid's a lady killer. You know what the False Face tells him? No. He tells the hummingbird that the brakeman's daughter sees him the last time he's in town. Can't wait to meet him. <laughs> that good? Oh, it is screamingly funny. And it will be especially funny when the hummingbird finds out there is no such character as the brakeman's daughter. Look, he ain't gonna find it out unless he's tipped. As I told you before, the false face don't like his gags tipped. Believe me, Kropa, as much as I like the hummingbird, I like to live also. <laughs> You're smart, Broadway. I am alive. Yeah, the boys are in there a long time. Maybe the false face is having trouble with Cheeks. Cheeks? Cheek Shiraki? Yeah, why? Oh, there is a bad boy. Yeah, well, the false face got him to rights. If Cheeks don't want to go along with the merger, well... Yeah, I see. Uh-huh. Now, I... <laughs> so we got it all settled, huh, Cheeks? I guess I got to play ball with you, false face. Sure, sure. We all team up. Make a better deal for everybody. Well, hello, Broadway. Hello, False Face. I'm kind of surprised to see you here. So am I. I brought him along, False Face. Oh, I see. 
Maybe you told him where you was going tonight, Hummingbird, huh? Yeah, yeah, I told him. Hmm? Huh? The, uh, Brakeman's daughter is a classy doll. Ain't she Broadway? Huh? Oh, sure, sure she is, yeah. 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 I gotta be running along, Face. Sure, Cheeks. Yeah, see you later. Uh, wait a minute, Cheeks. Yeah. You're satisfied with the deal, ain't you, Cheeks? Sure. It's a good deal. Why? I was just asking. You seem kind of sore in the other room. Sore at you, Face? Maybe. Why should I be sore? Maybe because you ain't gonna like me as top man. I got no argument. <laughs> That's the way, Cheeks. That's the way you play ball my way. And you'll play ball a lot longer. <laughs> sure, I get it. Well, see you later. <laughs> Cheeks ain't real happy. Yeah, better watch him, Face. I will, Crowbar. Well, what's everybody looking so down about, huh? I, I, I guess I have got to go. Stick around, Broadway. Yeah, I have got an appointment. Later. You want me any more, Face? No, Hummingbird. Hey. Oh, boy, are you a lucky guy. Ain't he, Crowbar? Yeah, there's a million guys that give their right arms to meet the brakeman's daughter. Yeah, and boom, she sees you talking to me the last time you're in town, and right off she falls. Like that. Yeah? <laughs> Am I kidding, Crowbar? No, 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 she falls for you all right, Hummingbird. Like all dames do. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could make him tumble like that. Well, it's a gift, Face. I guess so. What time you want me to meet you tonight? Eight, right here. Sure, I'll be here. Uh, come on, Broadway? Yeah, sure. Stick around, Broadway. But I have Stick around. A... I ain't seen you for a long time. I'd like to talk to you. Yeah, but I... All right. See you later, Broadway. Face. Sure. Ha, <laughs> 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 You don't think it's funny, Broadway? Ha, ha. You got objections? Look, Face, why pull the gag on a nice kid like the hummingbird? Pick a guy like Cheeks. He knows the gag. I pulled it on him two years ago. Oh. You, uh, you ain't figuring on maybe tipping the hummingbird, are you? Broadway, I like to have my fun. Yeah, but the hummingbird will find out I know the gag. He is not going to take it kindly that I do not tip him. And it. I won't take it kindly if you do. You don't want to spoil no fun. Do you, Broadway? I love to see everybody happy, including myself. But one cannot have everything in this world, I guess. It's the ticket. <laughs> look, look. The hummingbird's a cinch to fall for a rib like the brakeman's daughter. First off, he is a one-two hit with the doll. Second... He knows it. Third, he never passes up a chance to make the acquaintance of any new doll. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, oh, oh, I can hardly wait to see the look on his face. Oh, it's going to be good. <laughs> it's going to be good. <laughs> yes, it is a big joke. But it turns out a little different than the big false face thinks it will. Now, maybe you are wondering what the gag is and what is all the mystery about. Well, I will tell you that in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, The Brakeman's Daughter. comes up that night. The hummingbird comes into Mindy's where I am having a bite to eat. He sits down, and the scene is as follows. I'm kind of jittery tonight, Broadway. Huh? To tell the truth, I am more than somewhat nervous myself. Yeah? What about? Well, I... I do not know. I come to think of it, you've been acting kind of funny. What's eating you? Nothing at all, hummingbird. Nothing at all. I got a kind of funny feeling. Maybe I shouldn't go with the false face tonight. What makes you feel that way? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny thing. A week ago, I'd have jumped at the chance to meet up with a classy doll like the face says the brakeman's daughter is, and... Yeah. Hey, why do they call her that? Well, I... Well, you see... But does not false face tell you the whole story? Well, he did say something about her old man being pretty careful about the doll. That is it. And, uh, they live out in the island, way out. That is what I hear. You know, I wonder if it's worth it. 
Maybe I just ought to forget the whole thing. Maybe you should. On the other hand, why should I pass up the chance to meet the doll? She says she wants to meet me. Uh-huh. Uh, ever since this morning when I saw that other doll, I've been jumpy. I wish I'd have gotten a name and address. She seems like a very nice doll to know. But not for me, I guess. Well, well. Hello, Hummingbird. Broadway. Hiya, Crowbar. Oh, Crowbar. Ain't it about time you got going, Hummingbird? Well, it's only a quarter to eight. Yeah. Gee, I wish I was you, kid. <laughs> I see the brakeman's daughter once, and she is a hundred percent. Ah, me. No doll like that ever goes for me. Mm. Well, guess I'll be going. Hey, sure. Good luck, kid. Thanks. See you later, Broadway. Yeah, okay, Hummingbird. Been a good boy, Broadway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fish can hardly wait. He's got a new angle all cooked up for the hummingbird. Oh? I think he thinks of every angle. He works the gag a hundred times. Oh, this is different. He planted some of the boys out there. <laughs> and listen, when he knocks on the door, one of the boys is going to start blasting away with a rod. Like it's the brakeman guarding his daughter. <laughs> my, my. The face certainly does it up fancy. <laughs> Naturally, the hummingbird's going to take the wind. Because he don't want to catch any lead. A very sound decision. <laughs> then the face is going to lead him into the woods out there and lose him. The same woods where Rocco Scarpati freezes to death, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was an added attraction. Yeah. I wonder what the hummingbird is going to say and do when he finds out what happens to him. Who cares? It's only a gag. I'd like to see the hummingbird's face when he's wandering around in them woods with nobody around for miles and miles. <laughs> Boy, he's gonna be real tired when he finally gets back to New York. So that is the gag. The hummingbird is the sucker. The big false face will lose him in the woods. Well, Face and the Hummingbird get out to this lonely part of Long Island. It is very dumb, and the only way you can get there is in a car. The house is one that nobody lives in, so it is perfect for the rip. Then the proceedings go as follows. You gotta be real quiet now, Hummingbird. That guy can get lost out here. Hey, how come this doll lives in a joint like this? I told you. Our old man don't like nobody to get close enough to hand her a slice of fruitcake. Look, uh, maybe it ain't worth it. Are you kidding? I tell you, this doll is a million bucks, a pile of diamonds. And she takes a fancy to you. Ah, uh, dolls are a dime a dozen. Not like this one. Wait a second. What's the matter, Face? Nothing. I just want to be careful. You sure the brakeman ain't home? She told me he's on a run to Albany. Yeah, but maybe he'll come back. You scared? Me? You're acting like it. <laughs> the way I hear it, you ain't afraid of nothing. Well, you heard it right, Face. Well, then what are you beefing about? You scared of an old guy? I'm scared of nobody. If you are, we can go back to the car and drive back to New York. Well? I... I was just thinking. About what? Uh, another doll. Who? I don't know. You crazy? Guess so. Now, look, look. I promised the doll I'd bring you tonight. You're going to make me look like a Welsh? Okay, okay, let's go. Sure. Where's the house? Right up ahead. I don't see any lights. Sure not. There's trees in the way. Yeah. Now, look. I'm going to go onto the porch with you, and I'll knock on the door. When the doll answers, you're on your own, see? I get it. All right. I'll wait at the car for you. Okay. Careful now. We're almost there. There's the porch. Okay, okay. Let's go. You got to take it easy. Take a look around first. Well, I don't see anybody. Fact is, I don't believe there's anybody around for miles. Except the brakeman's daughter. All right, let's go. Sure, sure. Now, remember, I'll knock the doll will answer, and then I leave. You got it? You told me a hundred times. I just want to be sure you know. Okay, there's a door. Boy. <laughs> this is going to give you one big kick. Well? Yeah, it's funny. Somebody ought to answer. Who's that? What's going on there? Beat it, kid. It's the brakeman. Face! Hey, hey, face! The wards to the right. Come on. Face! Face! Come on! In here. Get in here. Huh? What the... Please, you get in. 
I gotta get out of here. Please be quiet. Would you? Never mind that now. Wait. Look here, doll. I. Hey, it's a car. Close. Hey, you. You're the, the girl this morning. I guess they're gone. You, who are you talking about? What are you doing here? I live here. You. No, you ain't the. Oh, I was scared. Those men came here. They hid all around the house. What men? Look, Miss, open up, will you? Give, spill it. What happened? Well, I was upstairs. I, I heard a car pull up and stop, and then I, I heard some men talking. I was scared. Well, why didn't you call the cops? There's no phone. Well, you could have put on the lights. There are none, not yet. Look, maybe we better start from the beginning. Now, tell me what happened. Well, I, I heard the car, and then the men. I came downstairs. Somebody tried this door, but I'd locked it from the inside. They tried the windows, but I'd locked them. Yeah, then what? Well, I, I waited and listened, and... They went off the porch around to the side of the house. I heard them talking. Well, who? Who were they? I don't know, but... I heard one of them say something that sounded like... Chic. Chic. Chic? Cheeks! Was it cheeks? Yes, that was it. Cheeks. You wait here. Where are you going? Please don't leave me. I... Okay, come along. But easy. When I saw you and, and heard you... Just enough moonlight for that. What are those men doing? And I... Wait. You better stop right there. Why? <gasps> Take it easy. Oh. He's dead. Yeah. He got enough slugs in him to sink a battleship. Who is he? He was a guy we called Big False Face. <laughs> now, it, it, it's okay, baby. It's okay. There's nothing to worry about oh, now. If I hadn't recognized you, you... Yeah. If you hadn't, I'd have been with False Face, right alongside him. He, he'd have killed you, too. Seems likely. Now, maybe you better start doing some explaining. Me? But I... Yeah. How come you were here? Well, I live here. So you're the... I just bra... moved in today. It was the only place we could find. That's why there are no lights, no phones. Oh, yeah. And you're sure nobody lives in this place before you come in? No one. That's why I, I wondered how you found out who I was and, and how you found my address so soon. How, how did you? Don't make no difference now. Ah, looks like a real funny gag. Yeah, a real funny one. Only it didn't work out the right way for a guy I used to know. That is what happens. Cheek Shiraki takes advantage of the opportunity to rub out Big False Face. It is a perfect spot for it. Well, there is a big to-do. The gendarmes do a lot of work, and they come up with cheeks. Naturally, the hummingbird is cleared because the doll tells what she knows. But that is not the end of the story. And what the payoff is, I will tell you in a minute. <laughs> Like I say, Cheek Shiraki is tagged for rubbing out Big False Face. Then it is a couple days later that I am sitting in Mindy's with the hummingbird, talking about the whole thing. Cheeks had it figured perfect. He knew the False Face was going to be out there. I'd be the only witness. Besides a couple of the Faces boys who, uh, who were rubbed out first. And the doll saves you, huh? Yeah. Cheeks didn't know she was in the house. It looked perfect. But it wasn't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, what did you know about the gag? Me? I know it all along, Hummingbird. You do, huh? Yeah. And you didn't tell me? Only because I have no idea what is going to happen. Nah. Okay. Br oh, no. What is the matter? Look, the doll coming over here. I got to get out of here. You do? Why? Well, just, just, just because I... Hello, there. Hi. Hello, miss. Sit down. No. Hummingbird, where are your manners? Thank you. You left so suddenly the other night. Yeah, yeah, I did. Why? Well, I, uh, I had some business to attend to. I guess so. I, uh, I thought maybe you'd come out and see me, but you didn't. So I asked about you, and someone told me I might find you here. 
Okay, you found me. So what? Nothing. Nothing, I guess. You know, Hummingbird, it seems to me that a young miss like this needs somebody to show her around New York. Okay, show her. Who, me? Oh, I can think of no place interesting she might like to see if I took her. Okay. <laughs> what odds will you give me, Broadway? On what? On my chances. Oh, I never take such a short-end bet. What are you talking about? Oh, the brakeman's daughter. What? What did you say? <laughs> the brakeman's daughter. But, uh, forget it. You're an amazing person. I am? He is? Why? Why, because first you found out where I lived without even knowing my name, and then you seem to know my father. I do? Well, you're only a little wrong. You see, my father is one of the oldest and best-known conductors on the Erie Railroad. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, The Brakeman's Daughter. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Fern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production.